It's Monday and it's a holiday week. And I don't know what you're doing with your holiday week, but I'm going to have some fun with you. We're going to hang out. Uh, I'm debating on coming on Christmas morning. I think I might get in trouble with my wife. I'm not quite sure yet, <laughs> but at the 730, if everybody's sleeping, I'm coming to hang out with you guys. But uh, I had a little delay with my uh, man with my system this morning, not want to come online. I know what it is. Everything is like a restart. Good morning. I am, uh, it says, I am Ritu Huff Jr. Good morning to you. Um, today, we're talking about a little concept about your hive. I'm going to call it your hive today because I think that the hive is an incredibly important thing. Trying to find success alone is, is, uh, is man, it's like it's, it's like trying to go purposely a long way around. Good morning, Ryan Diggs. Ryan Diggs, Leah Sheridan. Good morning, Shenika Wilson. Hey, hey, hey. Good morning, everyone. I love, look at, she's saying good morning to everybody, not just me. I like that. So let's talk about this today. Today, I want to have a discussion, um, Grand Rising, Nikki Mystery, Gordon, about the hive. Now, I want you to picture this in your world that you live in. I don't know what world you live in, but you got people around you. We are created as human beings to be in relation to other humans. Good morning, LinkedIn user, whoever that is. Uh, Geneva Fenty, hey, hey, good morning. And I think sometimes we forget this. And it sounds odd that we, I would say we forget that we are supposed to be in relation to people we are. We're supposed to be in relation to other human beings all day long. I zoomed in so you can see my face over here. And I think that we forget that on the path to success, we got to have somebody to help us sometimes. Good morning, Henrita Maleo. Yes, Abundance Week. Good morning, Wayne Purnell. How you doing, man? Doc. Uh, James Moore. Good morning from Atlanta, Georgia. Hey, um, we got Sedgwick over here saying F you. Hey, I appreciate this morning, man. Look, I got, I got the haters on a Monday. That's beautiful, man. It means you're reaching people. I tell people this. If you are doing something enough for people to find out and dislike you, that means you're doing enough for people to find you and love you. So thank you, man. Let's me know that I'm putting my word out in the world, uh, words out into the world, and they're working. Uh, Calm Shop Baby says your English is good. I appreciate that. It's the only language I speak. If I couldn't speak English, it'd be a problem because I wouldn't be able to communicate. But let's talk about this. In the world of the, the thing we live, is we got people, man. We're designed to be in relation to other human beings. We are designed to have communication. That's why people who are, are pulled away, who are segmented, who are solo, man, they, they struggle. And on top of this, if you think about success, I was part of a team. Right? I was part of a bunch of teams, played in the NFL and had all these different teams I've been part of. Man, success alone sucks. I'm being real honest. Like, if I have success by myself, it kind of sucks. Like, not that it's bad, because success is good at success. But I always had this thought, like, whenever I win, I want to be able to turn to somebody I know, give them a high five, say, hey, man, we did it, right? We, had, we were successful. We made this thing work. And if you don't have the ability for someone in your life to be there when you succeed, it kind of sucks. kind of a little bit empty. It's a little bit boring. And not to mention, it's harder. It is so much harder to have success when you're solo. It's hard to stay motivated in those tough times. In fact, there are studies that show that people who have an accountability partner have an 80% better chance of actually succeeding in the goals they set for themselves. Just having an accountability partner, someone's gonna be there to give you a little bit of like a bump when you need it. Cause some days we wake up and we don't wanna do much. Like to be honest today, I went to bed last night at one o'clock. My son and I watched a movie called Battleship from like, I don't know, like night, night, 2012 or something. Uh, we watched the movie and it was like one o'clock. I'm like, man, I don't know if I wanna get up this early to do a live stream, but I'm being accountable to you because I know someone's going to reach out because it happens. Someone reached out and be like, hey, where were you today? So I'm like, hey, okay, I'm going to get it going. It's in my head, but I know how it works. Now, I also want to tell you this. The way we operate as humans, oh, we got someone from Zambia, Africa. Good morning, Grace M. Sakala. So we have these, these things where I don't think we keep comprehend how the hive works around our life. Now, if I'm talking about succeeding, right, and making it be easier with some people, with accountability, well, what does that look like to have that group? And I'm going to give you this concept that I, a lot of people have heard from me, but I don't know if you've heard from me, so we're going to share it today. But here's this concept. I think that we all need to have an amazing hive of humans. Like, think about bees. Bees can't make honey alone. they got to have the worker bees that go travel out and get the bees, get the honey, the pollen. They bring the pollen back. They do the little thing. They shake, they jive, they dance. And all of a sudden, i got this honey that comes out, and we love it. Yes, your vibe attracts your tribe. I love it, the Sarah. Uh, the Savvy Nail Chick. The Savvy Nail Chick, is she's, a, she's the one that comes on all the time, and I appreciate you. I love you. So what ends up happening, oh, and DJ says, love your energy. Every Monday morning, I appreciate you, Dynasty. There's a DJ. I can't see it went up too far. Um, so here's the thing. With honey, you need to have a hive, a hive of multiple different bees doing different jobs in order to be able to get the beautifulness of honey to come out so we can all taste it and enjoy it. And I think if you took a second to realize kind of how you work, you are very, very similar in a hive you need to make a life that's sweet like honey. Literally, a life that is sweet like honey. Because I believe that in life, man, we have the ability to have these beautiful, sweet, amazing lives 
but they're not going to happen by by accident. They're not going to happen honestly by yourself. You need people in it. But sometimes we have a hive of lazy bees. We do. Like if you were honest about it, sometimes we have a hive of lazy bees that float around, just buzz it, buzz, buzz, and they don't really want to do anything to help the the, the actual. Like we call it high create sweet honey. They don't want to go out there and do the work sometimes. And what I mean is a metaphor. I want to think about like this. When it comes to the people you surround yourself with, you need people that are trying to help you make sweet honey in life. These are supporters. These are people that are they're elevating your heart. They're not killing your dreams. They're igniting them and, and, and drawing more from them, inspiring you to do more, keeping you accountable, pushing you further. And if you have people inside of your hive that aren't doing that, you got to make some changes. And I'm going to tell you exactly how you can make a change or talk to them about making a shift to actually increase not only your life, but their life. And it's an interesting one because here's the truth. We all know the reality is if I want to have a hive that's sweet like honey, I have to remove some people to put some people in. You can't have the same kind of people pretty much doing the exact same job. We have to think about how life works and life works in a way if I have a capacity for a certain amount of humans in my world, as do you. And if I don't keep in mind what that capacity is and how many I can have, I end up being kind of strung out with too many friends, too many people. Some are good, some are bad. Or if I want to add new people, new community, a new part of the hive, I can't do it if people are already occupying certain spaces. So what do I do? How do I get, how do I get bad people out and good people in? Bad may be a little bit of a tough term, but you know what I'm talking about. How do I get people that aren't serving the hive out and people that are serving the hive in? And here's how you do it. It's a very simple conversation, but it's very hard to have most of the time. And the first piece of it is this. You've got to determine who they are. Like own up and be clear about who's the person in your life right now or people in your life right now that are not making this hive get where the hive needs to be, who are not helping this hive make the sweet honey needs to make. Because if we go into a new year, you don't have time for that. You don't have time for it. I don't have time for it. I genuinely do not have time in my life for people that have a weird negative energy that draw me down. I just don't. And I find myself removing them very quickly. Like very quickly, they got to go because I can't spend any time with this thing. It's not helping me make honey for the high for the world that I serve. Like it's not going to, it can't be there. And so what I've realized for a lot of people is they don't get to that point of realizing you got to do something. Like you genuinely have got to start making some changes and making some shifts in the people. And the way you do it is this. You determine who they are first and now you have what's called a meeting. You can call it like a staff meeting. Like if it's like a business, I look at it sometimes like a business. If I'm a business, my life has to go to a certain level. But business has a task and a goal and an aspiration. You're certain people around this business that they have a job to help the business get there to make the honey. Now, if for some reason an employee at work isn't doing a job, what do they do? Well, the boss either one fires them like, hey, you're not doing a job. Boom, you're gone. Or they call her into the office and say, hey, look, we need to have a meeting. The business is going here. I want you to be part of this business, but if you're not part of this business and helping to do this, man, you, you can't be around the business anymore. And that's exactly how you have to do it in your life. You have to find the people, you have to talk to them and say, look, I'm trying to get here in my life. I need, I'm trying to make this amazing thing happen, build this whole life, this whole amazing thing. I'm trying to make this get done, but for some reason, you aren't doing the job I need you to do. This could be your best friend, it could be your colleague, it could be your, your work, it could be anybody. And my computer's about to die because I didn't bring the battery out, so I'm going to have to make this a little bit quick, I'm noticing, for those of you guys who are not on Instagram. Uh, I, got, I got 2%. I'm going to go run and get my charger. This is so weird. This is so weird. I'm going to actually have to leave my office and go in the middle of a live stream and get a charger to stay live, but I'm going to come back and tell you. Hold on. We made it. We made it, people. That's so weird, right? Hey, we're charged, we're locked and loaded, nobody died. So the hive and how it all works. Hey, this is crazy, right? The way that I see people is that we have to get them off the boat sometimes, out of the ship, and they have to get off the company. Now you have this meeting. The meeting is very simple. The meeting looks like this. I catch my breath from running down the hallway. It's like an 18 yard hallway. <sighs> Craziness. What I end up having to do is have a meeting and say, look, company's going here. Now I would, I would love for you to be around this company and get me to get there with, I would love for you to be somebody who's with me at this place. But the problem is you aren't doing your job four or five and 40. It does help a little bit my calico styles. And so what you do is tell them, look, 
I want this to take place, but you aren't showing up the way I need you to show up. You aren't doing the things I need you to do. You aren't being supportive. You aren't being uh, inspiring. You aren't helping. You aren't guiding. You aren't keeping me accountable. And I need you to do that. I need you to be here for my life. I need you to be the one that supports the love. I need that from you. But if you don't do it, you got to understand why I might go a different direction with the company. If you can't be that best friend, if you can't be that colleague, if you can't be that sibling that shows up, if you can't be that person who's around my life having this this time, you can't be around the company. And you got to be honest and tell them what they would need to do to be able to do a better job, to be able to be around and support the company on its destination. Now, this is a beautiful thing. The reason why we struggle to get people out of our lives sometimes is because we don't want to have that, that kind of pain and anguish. And honestly, we don't want to have that kind of darkness of feeling bad about cutting somebody off. Good morning, Marie. Thank you. That's what we, you don't want to cut people off. So what we, what we get to is a place where we kind of let these people hang around our lives way too long. They have too much sp time spent when they shouldn't be around our lives. They ask to go somewhere. We reluctantly go, okay, I, I don't like hanging out with Nick, man, but let's go hang out with Nick. You know, I don't want to hang out with Susan, but we're going to go hang out with Susan. Whatever it may be, you don't want to be around them. And so what ends up happening is you get this space of life where you're just kind of, you're not making honey. You're not making a great, you're not getting anywhere. So what I tell you is you got to get to the point of having a conversation and saying, look, in this area, if you say nothing, if you did nothing, said nothing, and you let everything ride as it is, the what ends up happening is you get to a space where, where you are the only person feeling bad because, well, they don't, they don't feel the stress. They're just doing their thing, taking away, but you know you aren't making the progress you should. You know it. You know there should be things you should be getting done. The other way, that having this medium, I'm telling you, it helps two lives. It helps your life because now you have to have a conversation of what it needs to be done and what it takes to actually grow your business in your life. Or when I say business, I'm meaning your life. Or you have this other person and this person come along and you get to help them make a choice to be better for their own lives. It's an interesting dynamic because now I can say, look, I need you to be better. But if you aren't better, you can't be here. But here's how you can be better. You helped their life. You help them be better humans by guiding them and giving them some insight of what needs to be done for them to improve. Because maybe it's like, hey, I need you to get up and work with me, work out with me in the morning. I need you to, I need you to have more open conversations. I need you to read this book and get on my same page about how I want to talk to you and communicate with you. I need you to read the five love languages in our relationship so you understand kind of how I navigate and operate my life. I need you to do X, Y, and Z. But typically that X, Y, and Z, it's a bettering of their life. But if they choose not to do it, if they choose not to, it's no longer on you. Now it's on them. At this point now, they have made the choice to exit your life. And now you don't have to feel bad anymore. You have to worry about how they feel. You have to worry about the things going on. You generally can move on with your life and live in a way where you're progressing the next year, which is also another stage of making your hive sweet like honey. And what that looks like is pretty simple, but hard. It's adding folks. It's adding other humans to your life. Now, this is the thing that we as humans, as much as we are built for relationship, we do not like adding people sometimes. There are individuals like my wife, it's crazy. My wife is such an open, loving human, but she's, she's leery and worrisome about adding other humans to her life. It's a very interesting dynamic, but she's normal in that capacity compared to most other people. She doesn't want to have to go through the work of adding new people and adding new energy and adding new time because it's just like, ah, I got to go through meeting new folks, all that kind of stuff. So it's not a, a, a drive to actually go and find new human beings. But if you're a person trying to make an amazing new business of life and grow your hive, it's a necessity. Now, she has amazing friends and she has built great friendships over the years. But I'm a guy that's like, I want more. I want more people. I want more humans. But it's very key in the people I collect, we'll call it, and people I have relationships with. The reason is I realize there are certain areas of my hive that need different workers and better workers. And so I find that it's difficult sometimes to, for a lot of people, find that new community that new group of friends, that new dynamic, that new mastermind, that new coaching program, that, that new membership site. What, to find that new group of people where you know are at a level you want to be, because I don't think that you are the average of the five people you surround yourself with. It's an odd thing. I don't think you're the average of them. I think you're the average of their expectations. Think about the expectations of the five people you surround yourself with. I could be with a bunch of millionaires, but if they don't want to do more in business or make more impact... They're of no use to my direction of where I want to go. It's, it's a lowly hive of workers. But if I've got people who aren't quite millionaires, but they want to go past where these current one millionaires want to go, I'm with them. They may not be there yet, but they're hustling to go past where they're sitting at, right? It's not the average human beings. It's the average of the expectations. So you've got to find those people. And it's scary sometimes because you might not be at their level. 
You might not be at the level that they are at at this very moment. You might feel a little bit less than, feel a little bit like you don't matter. You, you got to feel a little bit like, oh, I'm taking their time. No, no. You got to go and lean into that group because that's the group you got to enter. And you may feel inadequate, but you got to lean in still. You have to add these people to your life by coming around them. If you don't do this, you're de detracting from all the capabilities of what your life potential could be. Not only that, you don't get to celebrate with great people. You want to be around great people doing great things, celebrating great things, and it only happens when you put yourself into the position to have that. So it means once you've removed these people from your life or they've taken an exit stage left on their own, they've decided, I don't want to be here. Now you go and say, I'm going to do the scary work, the hard thing of adding people to my life. I might go hire that coach. You gotta go. If you're looking for a coaching mentorship program, shameless plug, this is what we do. Come hit me up. Send me a message. It's quite literally, I help people make shift happen in three coaching programs. I am this guy for a lot of individuals who are trying to take their message to the world. Like That's what I do. I love it every single day, right? But also, there are people that may be a fitness professional. Maybe you'll find a higher personal trainer in the beginning of the new year. Someone's going to be there, part of your hive. Maybe your business, actual business, needs you to get an accountant. I don't know. Maybe you go see the doctor. Maybe you need to buy, you know, buy into a, a program that gives you a community of people doing the same exact thing. One can keep you accountable. Who knows what it is? But what I'm going to say is if you expect to have anything great happen at any pace that's quicker than you're doing it now, you can't go at it alone. You've got to find a community of people and you've got to create that hive of humans that allows you to actually press into the things you want to press into and elevate once you're there. And that's my message for you today. I don't have a whole lot more. It's just the fact that, man, I love humans. And I know we were built for a connection. We were built for this kind of community aspect to be in relation. But you've got to realize that you have to be very, very protective of who is inside the bubble of your life. And the people that are in there have got to serve. And if, it's a selfish thing. To be honest, it's selfish. But you can't pour from an empty cup. If people keep pu pulling out of your cup and draining your cup and not fill it back up, you're going to go, go crazy. You're going to burn yourself out. You're going to get to the point where you realize, and if you haven't already got there, that you can't pour from an empty cup and you need a cup that's full to keep pouring out. So you better selfishly protect that damn cup. Selfishly. Seriously. Like, cut people off. They don't belong around. If they can't fill your cup, don't have them in there drinking off your cup, man. I, I mean anything. They don't need to be around hanging out. They shouldn't be at your house. They shouldn't be... None of that. Like, you got to get out of there. And then what happens is you find that you get around people that fill your cup as you fill theirs. It's like this whole pouring cup party. <laughs> it's a whole different monster. And then your success, man, it skyrockets. So find people that help you do more and be more so you can have more. It's really what it boils down to. So that's it. That's what Monday for you guys. Uh, I will see you guys Wednesday morning. I might see you Christmas morning. I'm not quite sure yet. If my wife lets me, everybody's sleeping because my family, we're late families. So we, might be, we might stay up late and then I'll be able to have no problem hopping on. But I'm, hey, I'm, I got a family and my wife, she's part of my hive. She's the main key, you know, the, she's the queen. She's the queen bee <laughs> of my hive. And so I, in those kind of moments, family moments, I lean on to what makes she, her feel, makes she happy. Because I don't want to have to leave a, leave a live stream and have like an angry wife in the, in the front of the house. So, <laughs> all right, you guys, take care. If you haven't yet, go to IdentityShiftBook.com. This is actually in the book. Uh, the reason I'm talking about it now is it's at the, the back end of the book. And I'm actually writing this chapter right now. So this actually helps me with thoughts because I talk, and I don't know, just so you guys know these aren't planned, they're never prepped. Um, I literally just have an idea and I hit record and the idea was something about the hive today. And I was like, I'm just gonna talk it out. Because when I talk it like this, you might find you're like this if you're in this world of what I do. When I talk it out, it kind of flows out in a way that I go, oh, I forgot about that language or that perspective or that key piece. And so it actually helps me write to do these. So I wanna thank you for giving me a space to do that. So take care, God bless, and I'll see you on Wednesday. If you want another awesome video in our Black Excellence series, check out the video right there next to me. I think you'll enjoy it. Continue to believe, and I'll see you there.